Let's say one has hotels and hospitality and those are dragging down the entire portfolio. Yeah. How does that impact uh, the REMIC consequences? Uh, if there are just a few, are they able to split those off in some way or is, are they all married together? Is there any way to bifurcate the portfolio once it's been created? No, it's, it's, it's together forever. They're a family forever. Uh, you know, unless, of course, loans get paid off and refinanced and all that kind of stuff. So little by little, that CMBS issuance dwindles down. Um, um, but... Yeah, to, to answer your question, uh, if, if, you had, if you had a 20 loan portfolio in a CMBS issuance and, and 10 of those were hotels, then that could really cause some problems. And what people are, what, what the, you know, what the special service are going to be worried about is whether or not that's going to terminate the REMIC status of the loan. And so that's what their, their duty is to make sure that that doesn't happen. So they'll have to do whatever it takes to fix that, whether it's a forbearance or, or a, you know, a modification or whatever, in order to keep that thing alive. And then that's what they have to analyze the best thing. And then they have to get opinion of counsel to make sure it doesn't break the REMIC status. And it's a whole process. And that REMIC status, that is a, those are specific, financial criteria that talk about the, the period of time that a range of loans inside a portfolio are in default and et cetera, et cetera, right? They're yeah, it's, an, it's, it's basically an IRS vehicle, REMIC. It, it stands for Real Estate Mortgage Investment Conduit. And it's an IRS vehicle and, and status. So in order, they have to have that status in order to be uh, rated properly and traded on public, you know. Um, so, so they're so if they lose that status, then they can't trade anymore, and then all those people have to, you know, then you have to liquidate the whole thing, and it becomes a problem. So, so it's a tax status, I guess, is the best way to say it. And who does that? Does the the special service if it goes into remic default? So yeah, so, so if it, below. So, yeah, so the special servicer is going to be involved in making sure that it, it maintains its REMIC status. And in order to do that, they have to, you know, try to come up with different ways to, to fix that loan, whether it be to get a new borrower in, whether it be to refinance it out, whether it be whatever it is they're going to be trying to do. Um, you know, I think uh, for some borrowers who got into CMBS, um, and didn't really understand what CMBS was all about, they may be looking at this uh, economic stimulus package to maybe help them out of the CMBS loan. I mean, that could be a possible avenue for them where they say, okay, um, you know, this is still a good asset class and we'll come back when the economy comes and we'll just refinance with a, with a, with a traditional bank. You know, we've got enough equity in it now, let's refinance. So that could be a way out for them. Because um, it, it's hard, it's really hard to deal with. And it's not just because the special services are trying to be hard. It's because they have a duty to maintain that REMIC status. And so the, they, they only have certain things they can do. Um, and then they have to get opinion of counsel tax council, they have to get opinion of the borrower's council, they have to get opinion of the servicer's council. And then it all, you know, in order for them to maintain that rhythmic status.